This, this is Smorgasbord. Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I am Mick, and here is my co-host, Angel. Oh, I said Mick this time. Did you not say Mick last time? Yo, yeah. I am the I said, drunk I'm, one right now. <laughs> I said, I am here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I am here. <laughs> and then you're yeah. like, and then you brought it up, and even after you brought it up, I didn't even realize that I said what I said. <laughs> it was only I when hear, I started dad. editing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was only when I hit the editing floor that I'm like, oh, that's not my name. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'm drunk, and I can still say my name. I, that's, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, it's a, it's, it's healthy. This is hard mode. <laughs> hard mode. Just so, you, just so you know. It's okay. We're, we're doing a, we're doing a, a simple, quick, easy mode um, episode today. Because today yeah. we're, we're covering our absolute favorite snack so much that we ordered one live on episode once um wait didn't we spend like hundreds of dollars on these (laughs) yeah we we did (laughs) we we totally bought like three cases not boxes three cases i think we spent like 150 bucks on these okay yeah but like over the course of like two orders right it was like 200 bucks i still have some i didn't finish eating them because i was yeah so they're still here that's very healthy of you to do that. <laughs> I've been trying to like avoid them because I know when I open a box, this the box will be consumed in one sitting. <laughs> yes. So I that's... I hid them from myself. That is very <laughs> true. Where how how where did you hide it? Is it behind that Welch's box behind you? <laughs> no, I hid it under this like shoe rack. That uh. I have. Oh, so you have to work for it to get it. Yeah, I have to, like, okay. move things around to get to it. That's very smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Welch's box, that's just, like, free-for-all gummies all day. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know which one's worse for you, gummies or Girl Guide cookies. That's a good question. I don't know. Probably I equally. Like Girl Guide. I think gummies are worse. I would guess Girl Guide. That would be my guess. Really? Okay. Yeah. But if, yeah, so today we're covering the Girl Guide cookies. Yeah. <laughs> it's history of how it came to be and just a few facts about it. Yeah. Fun but, fact, I, I was trying to sell them at one point in my life. Were you a Girl Guide cookie? cookie? I wasn't Girl Scout? officially Girl... a Girl Guide Girl Scout. My friend was in it and I would just go with her to her meetings with, <laughs> while having no idea what was happening. Like she's like, oh, I have the, I can't hang out on Wednesday nights because I have these meetings my mom makes me go to. So I'm like, okay, I'll just go with you. <laughs> and then I go there. Like the meeting is in a church. It was really weird. It was really awkward. Like <laughs> some of the girls from our high school were also there. Right. But like we're not friends at school. That's the thing. They're like, we're too cool to hang out with you two losers. But then like when we were at the girl guide meetings they were really nice huh. <laughs> you know it was weird it was awkward like high school dynamics yeah totally so you reaped all the benefits without having to well they gave me a case of thin mints and said i had to sell them and oh. i just ate all of them <laughs> so, <laughs> so what, how did you even give them when they asked for the money what did oh you my t- mom had to pay them <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that was my brush of greatness. <laughs> and that's when I learned what Thin Mints were. Oh. Mm-hmm. And this was mm-hmm. in Can Like, these were Girl Guide cookies, not Girl Scout cookies? Yeah, they were, it, it was in Canada. Oh, cool. Well, but, and bef- so before we go deep dive into the wistery, the wonderful history of Girl Guide cookies, what's been in your palate? Oh, I ate so much stuff today. <laughs> I don't even remember. Okay. I made this like super healthy smoothie thinking, yeah, I'm going to be gonna be healthy today. I'm going to like eat all this super fruit stuff. And I have like a mix, like a smoothie add on that has super foods. I don't know what it is, but it's green. So I assume that it's really good for you. <laughs> 
So I had that, but then my friend texted me. He's like, hey, you want to go thrifting? I'm like, fuck, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we went thrifting, and then he's like, okay, we're going to this place that has really good quesadillas. Damn. And, like, quesadillas aren't usually that big. So I didn't know. I ordered one, and this place, like, <laughs> their quesadilla was, like, the size of, like, I, I can't. Like a small dog. <laughs> so it I'm was not round. Of, it was, like if a dog was curled up sleeping. <laughs> and I'm not talking about like a chihuahua. I'm talking about a dog slightly larger than a chihuahua. Like a Yorkie? It was, it was a... Yorkies a, are bigger, smaller? Yorkie? A, Pugs? Yeah, I don't know. It was a very big, very big... Um, quesadilla and it was like chicken and bacon <laughs> they put chicken and bacon My in it goodness. <laughs> yeah it was really good and then when we went to his house his roommates like hey oh no it wasn't his roommate it was his friend it's all like so i bought a kilo of mini eggs <laughs> oh no <laughs> so here everybody have mini eggs <laughs> yeah so i ate a lot of stuff today <laughs> so to reward yourself for having a nice healthy smoothie yeah yeah you had a quesadilla and... <laughs> and a kilo of Shared a kilo eggs. of mini eggs. <laughs> yeah. And now you're drinking pink things. Um, ice, ice pink lemonade, With which the, is not uh, very good. <laughs> which is also clear, but has... What is it? Blue? It has brilliant and, blue and Allura red whatever. as part of the ingredients. But when you pour it, it's clear. <laughs> I feel like it should be an episode in itself, like just figuring out food coloring, strange naming, <laughs> strange ways companies have found a way to describe ingredients. Right. Yeah. <laughs> fructose instead of just saying it's fucking sugar. Oh, fructose is different from sugar, though. Oh, true. What was the one they used to say or say now? It's like high fructose corn syrup. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently it's bad. bad for you. I don't really know why, but it's just, I just hear it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, what did you eat? Yesterday we went for dinner with Curtis and Fala and we went to this restaurant called Land and Sea. Just super mm. fancy. They had really fancy dishes. Like you know it's fancy because you're spending more than $30 for, like, a few slices of things. <laughs> do, do things only come in slices? <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> but the food was delicious. We had, um, what did we have for appetizers? We had some kind of beef carpaccio and salmon something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the carpaccio was really good. And then for appetizers, we had, sorry, for, for the meal itself, we had this, like, unagi risotto, which was oh cool so good that sounds good yeah um then we had the chili crab it was like the chef's interpretation of was it hong kong or singapore that does chili crab i have no idea i don't think i've ever had it singapore yeah it's like nice. it's, it's um what is it it's like a right it's like a crab dish so you get a full crab and then you put it on I think it's like tomatoes and chilies kind of dish. It's like kind of sweet, acidic, and spicy at the same time. Nice. It's really good. Um, this one was good as well. It wasn't a dungeon. Like, it wasn't a full crab. It was a kind, of, kind of like a soft shell crab instead. So we were kind of hoping for a bigger crab. Because <laughs> we were still hungry. So we ended up ordering another dish and getting like a flat iron wagyu steak. On, oh, nice. Uh, Hayashi mm. sauce, which is like a demi beef demi sauce and that was really good it was a good kind of last course i guess nice yeah it was tasty and it was pretty expensive but not as expensive as i th as we thought it would be we were prepared to get the server to pay for our dinner but... <laughs> like this is coming out of your tips <laughs> it's like you recommended this dish why are you not paying for it <laughs> Wow, imagine any time they <laughs> say the special, they have to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, like, sadly, our least favorite dish was the one he recommended. Oh, he got bad taste. Yeah, but he was nice. He was cool. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, on to Girl Guide Cookies. 
a quick history of the Girl Guide cookies is, or sorry, of Girl Guides in Canada is it started in 1909. Apparently, it started in England, not in Canada, because ah, the motherland, the, the motherland, exactly. <laughs> With a bunch of girls wanted to take part in a Boy Scout rally, so Lord Baden Powell asked his sister Agnes to start a program. So she started it in 1909. It reached Canada really quickly by 1910. Yeah, you know, these little rascals aren't doing jack shit. <laughs> They're just outside burning things. <laughs> like, the program she actually started was how to employ and mobilize children, children as a workforce. <laughs> oh my god, it's true though. Training yeah. them to be sales salespeople That's true. right from the get-go. It's pretty much making mm. children work. Um, the first unit started in St. Catharines, Ontario. And this workforce was mobilized so quickly that it reached every province had a unit by 1912. So it took three years to go Canada-wide. Wow. Maybe the cookies are so good. Yeah. Weren't it, women weren't even allowed to vote in 1909, weren't they? Uh, I don't know about Canada. That's true. Might be different. But they yeah. could work. But they can sell cookies. <laughs> and sell cookies. Yeah. Um, over the the I guess more than a hundred years of the existence of the girl guides, over seven hundred women have gone through the program, which is a lot less than I thought. I thought that I'd yeah, more. I thought there would be more. But then again, boy, like same with Boy Scouts, it's like it's not everybody would be a Boy Scout. Very slow, few people were Boy Scouts when I was a kid. I don't think I personally knew any, but I also didn't have friends. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have friends. I, I joined the Boy Scouts, and that's why I didn't have friends. Oh. No. Mm, interesting. I don't remember anyone from the Boy Scouts, so I guess I didn't have friends even when I joined the Boy Scouts. <laughs> well, at least you friends. learn how to start a fire. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's like, oh yeah, that's Mick. He has his own tent. We kind of just keep him in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> he's here because his parents made him come here <laughs> we don't want him either <laughs> wait did the boy scouts have to sell cookies I don't think so it's only the girls right no and I did mine in the Philippines and we didn't have fundraiser it was just called parents money ah uh, right yeah yeah. Then, yeah here we do they do fundraising with the girl guide cookies it was actually what year do you think think how soon did you think they started using girl guide cookies maybe like 10 years in yeah not really exactly. wow close. 17 yeah started in 1927 guess which um city province i mean it's gotta be ontario first no oh regina that's not a province, that is a city. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said city, province. Okay, I thought I was you like, said province. I can't remember if Regina's a city or a province. It's a city. Yeah. Which oh my prov- god, what province is that in? Saskatchewan. Is that, oh. Isn't Regina the capital of Saskatchewan? I don't know. I just know Moose Jaw is somewhere there. <laughs> yeah. We're, g- we're gonna fact check this after a... <laughs> maybe erase this part just in case you want to know the geography of canada you know who would know this may lynn from turning red true she she lives closer much closer i think i'm pretty sure it's a huge nerd (laughs) damn may lynn even in panda form she'd be able to answer that she would she would out test us in like canadian history oh totally i did not pay attention to socials me neither. <laughs> the only capital I can confidently name is Charlottetown because I couldn't spell it. Is that <laughs> There's too many letters. It's P I. Oh. Yeah. Too many letters. Is <laughs> Charlottetown is a very long word. Okay. <laughs> Did you just keep spelling it as Charlatan? Charlottetown. I don't think I even tried. I'm just like the one with the very long name. <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, it started in Regina in 1927. It was not started by the Girl Guides organization itself. It was started by Christina (laughs) Ripseman. Okay. (laughs) Sorry. Good for her. (laughs) Christina Ripseman. I I keep, I chuckled because I almost said (laughs) Ripseman. Hmm. 
Mm, that's a unfortunate last name there. So Christina Ripes him in the idea actually did not come from the organization it came from a girl guide leader named christina ripesemann it was her idea that or she wanted to i guess find a way to fundraise for the uniforms and all the girl guide stuff because i think that's a part of the organization's job or part of being a girl guide is to fundraise and she thought maybe selling cookies would be a good idea the idea was so successful that by 1929 the pretty much became an official fundraising method of the organization as a whole. So, one little Christina. Good for her. Good nice. job. Nice. Good job. What a... High fives all around. What a pioneer putting pioneer. those children to work. Yep. Found a way to capitalize on cookies. It's like a lemonade stand, but cookies, I guess. But cookies, yeah. yeah. But it would be cold in Regina, so... Did they just Uber it? <laughs> like horse carriage uber <laughs> or like a tricycle <laughs> I don't know this is so not related but have you seen the new uber ads no the one where they're the ads about how they also deliver groceries now <laughs> and oh like, yeah she pulls out one of the actors pulls out what was it like a diaper or something and she's like it's uber eats it says eats so can I eat it? <laughs> oh, wait, this is a real ad? Yeah, it's so they, funny. Somebody greenlit this? <laughs> it's so funny. No, they start I have not pulling seen out, this. Like, random groceries that aren't food, and they start going, can I eat this? Eat this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nope, I have not seen that. I have I ad eat... blocker, so <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't dude. see any ads. <laughs> I, it, it's been playing in YouTube a lot, and I have skipped or ignored every ad except for this one, because it's actually <laughs> You're really like, play fun. it again! <laughs> you think Uber Eats will deliver Girl Guide cookies? So I, I don't have to... <laughs> hope they would. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> anyway, um, some... Notable dates in the history of the Girl Guide cookies, vanilla, vanilla, vanilla creme, maple cream, and shortbread cookies were introduced in 1946. So I'm not sure exactly what the original, I think the original flavor was just the regular sandwich cookies. Oh, okay. Like an these, Oreo? Yeah. And then they added these flavors. Um, oh no, I think, or maybe they might have just been regular chocolate chip cookies. Oh, would, right. Actually, I would guess it's probably regular. Yeah, I would cookies. imagine it was more homemade. Yeah, very homemade. Um, oh, you know, I bet you they have the nastiest cookies ever. Oatmeal with, raisin. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, Offensive. <yeah>. Offensive. <laughs> that would have been... That's probably in an alternate universe. They made oatmeal raisin and the Girl Guide cookie. The Girl Guides of Canada just shut down. <laughs> yeah, they close. They, <laughs> they no close. longer exist. <laughs> they, that world does not have any. But yeah, 1946, they introduced more flavors of so vanilla cream, maple cream, and shortbread cookies. 1953 was the time when they find when the classic um, chocolate vanilla cookies that we know today are um, were um, made. Nice. When do you think the chocolate mint cookies? I feel like that's definitely a l way later invention. Okay. Like, maybe 70s? Later. Later. Way later. Oh, By really? Way later, way later. Like 90s? Yeah. 1995. Oh, Whoa! Yeah. At least 1995, they started selling it all across Canada. But yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm like, technology-wise, these mints are too good to be... <laughs> They weren't happy. From earlier. So wow. There's a spike in happiness in Canada in 1995. Huh. <laughs> also in childhood obesity. But, uh, but it's okay. It's okay. They're, at least they're huh. happy, I guess. I would not have guessed that it was that late. Yeah, I was surprised myself. <laughs> yeah. 2003 was the year where they made nut and peanut free cookies. So the bakeries themselves did not produce anything with nuts or peanuts in it. Hmm. Very good. In 2009, they reduced the trans fat in the mint cookies. 
Oh, good. They were killing you before. They're just going to kill you slightly oh, less now. <laughs> we, we will lightly cover, we will briefly cover this in our Is It Healthy, Is It Good section. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. In 2012, the Girl Guide Cookies became the, um, the box that we know it is today. Mm-hmm. In 2014, they became kosher certified. Certified. Nice. Mm -hmm. Although we did mention that there were vanilla cream, maple cream, and shortbread cookies before, nowadays there are only two flavors. The vanilla chocolate sandwich cookies that we know today, and the mint chocolate. They're sold twice a year, for those who may not be in the know in Gurgide cookie world. Mm -hmm. They're only sold twice a year. And... The good ones, the ones that you should care about, the minty ones. Are only sold once a year, so they only sell cookies twice a a year and each and it's seasonal so whatever season it is they'll only sell one of the flavors so the sandwich cookies are sold from march to june and the chocolate mint are only sold from october to december because... yeah so there's like a dead zone in between where you don't get any yeah they totally mcrib this yeah wow yeah. they're creating scarcity so you do sh stupid stuff like us yeah <laughs> buy three cases while recording a podcast episode <laughs> yeah, they usually sell for it's not usually they do sell for five dollars a box yeah even online yeah the money raised as they sell these cookies are in support of child labor laws nope they are <laughs> in support of girls and women girl guides it providing diverse exciting programs and activities it funds that it also helps the girl guides learn new interests such as labor um, learn valuable <laughs> leadership skills and making lasting friendships which you also do when you start a job um in all seriousness, though, the this the money that they raise from this does fund a lot of their programs, events, their camps, and also allows them to provide funding and for training and support for the leaders as well. I just thought of something. If we can find out who manufactures their cookies, we can skip the girl guides and go straight to the source and just order from them. That's true. It's strange though that like I wonder what bakery they use that they're only open twice a year for oh i bet they make all sorts of other stuff they only make the girl guide cookies oh, true, for true. them at certain times of year that's yeah. true yeah. we're cutting that's out the middleman here guys i'm <laughs> going straight to the sweet sweet minty source yeah if any of our three listeners know who, who they are just heads up we got you <laughs> we'll hunt them down um, the one thing i did want to note about the Girl Guide cookies is they are different from Girl Scout cookies. The Girl Scout cookies are from the States, and the Girl Guide cookies are the Canadian ones. The Girl Scout cookies in the States were started in 1917, and a lot of people seem to claim that the Girl Scout cookies were better than the Girl Guide cookies. Um, I've had both. Yeah, I do don't remember. I think I do like the American Thin Mints better than the ones here. Yeah, they're not as, um, the coating is not as waxy. Oh. From what I remember. So they're more yeah. creamy? They're more creamy and they're thinner. Like the Thin Mints, like they're more, the texture is slightly different. Like the, yeah, it, I would like say it's eggs? crispier. No, no, no. They're more crispy. Oh, I don't know if I like yeah. that. I like. You actually like the softness of like the Thin Mints here? Yeah, I've never really tried them. The one thing though about Girl Scout cookies is they have 11 flavors instead of two that we have It's here. America, man! <laughs> yeah. So they have the Adventurefuls, which are brownie inspired cookies with caramel flavored cream and sea salt. You know what? I'm going to order a whole bunch of these to ship to Point Roberts. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and we yes. can, because we can, we can border cross now without a PCR test. That's true. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they have the caramel chocolate chip, which is one of their gluten-free options. No, we will not be getting that one. <laughs> they have caramel delights or Samoas, which are caramel, coconut, and chocolate. Sounds good. There are the dosi dos, which are the peanut butter sandwich, which are oatmeal Ooh. cookies with peanut no. butter filling. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, just a little bit of I I'm down for this though cuz it's peanut cookies. butter. Yeah. I, I I did cookie fundraising once to fundraise my trip to Guatemala and mm-hmm. I raised like 1500 bucks. Oh, snap. In profit and like Wait, did you make the cookies yourself? Yeah, I had this like mm-hmm. we used to call it Mix Ahoy. <laughs> Where did you sell it? UBC. I would just sell it oh. to students and I would oh, sell like Oh, that's so smart. Yeah, and it was like so good people would like come find me and ask for more. <laughs> Wait, we should sell outside of dispensaries. <laughs> True. Yeah. yeah, well, I'll make I'll make these cookies for you guys. One, those were oatmeal chocolate chip cookies, and they are crack. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think it might just be the oatmeal com- in combination with raisins. That's bad. It's the raisins that's bad. Yeah. It's like it's like you know raisins and anything <laughs> yeah i don't know i i don't like oatmeal texture it's like when you have crafty but the only thing in crafty is raisin croissant croissant oh yeah no it wasn't a croissant it was like a scone type a scone that's right raisin scone yeah. yeah that's the worst yeah no pass there are girl scout s'mores which are graham cracker cookies with chocolate and marshmallows and i've had those up. those are really good Ooh, i trust yeah. that they have lemonades, which are shortbread cookies with lemon icing, and then lemon ups, which are lemon cookies with inspiring messages. <laughs> like you I, are I think I need that. I need that in my life. It's like, <laughs> tell me I'm worthy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a raisin. <laughs> um, they have peanut butter patties or tagalongs. I thought they said tagalongs, and I'm like, it's a Filipino Say thing. what? Yeah. But it's called tagalongs. Mm-hmm. Chocolate covered cookies with peanut butter. They have the classic shortbread, or they call it trefoil. Uh, it's called that because the shortbread cookies are in the shape of the Girl Scout trefoil. Mm-hmm. Thin mints, which is just mint chocolate coated cookies. They have toast yay, which is I have never heard of toast yay. <laughs> They're cookies that are shaped like toast with icing. Huh. Okay, that's kind of cute. Like a toaster strudel. I just love the name. It's toast, toast yay. yay. <laughs> And then they have Toffee Tastic, which is another gluten free option, and they're butter cookies with toffee bits. Unfortunately, no gluten. Bye! Yeah. Um, so, aside from the s'mores one, what else have you tried from here? Um, I think I've only had the s'mores and thin mints. Oh. I haven't gotten too fancy with the girl. Because it's like you have to find them too. Yeah, I think they're seasonal so, as well. Yeah. It seems. And but- like LA is not really like a kid friendly right place so it's like i happen to run into them like if they're in the parking lot of a target or something right it's all by luck yeah, yeah. fair enough but those seem nowadays that you similar to how we did during the pandemic with girls guide cookies in the states now you could order Buy them it. online yeah 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 oh, technology is exciting totally <laughs> um, so now we have a few cookie facts it seems like they only sell about a million boxes a year in Canada, which to me seems very low. Yeah, they're not hustling. These kids aren't mm. hustling enough. Yeah, you got you got to get these kids up to shape. Teach them yeah. how to sell things, man. They need to get on the TikToks <laughs> to yeah. sell. It's like 33 million Canadians or something, right? That's like less, mm-hmm. than, less than 10%. And we buy like 12 We each. bought most of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i feel like i feel like they're underselling themselves there mm, yeah. <laughs> apparently the classic girl guide cookies are best within 10 months of production and the chocolate mints are within eight months so you probably should start eating them they did say that it's a best before not an expiry date okay so it's a suggestion yeah <laughs> they just get all melty well good thing i've run out of groceries so I will be eating them. <laughs> there you go. For the foreseeable future, because I don't have any set days coming up either. Ooh, true. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Everything in the packaging apparently is either made of recycled materials or recyclable, but then they also said in certain areas. <laughs> so. Mm. We're not. I do a- recycle them. <laughs> I put the plastic bits in the general container. Yeah. Bin. I- yeah, we're not. There's there's a lot of other science podcasts there that can talk to you about recycling plastic and how big of a myth that is. Yeah, 
Well, I, I feel like it is, so yeah. <laughs> oh, to- it totally is. It was started by the oil and gas companies, and they tried to promote the plastic recycling, but they genuinely did not know Do it. or have the technology to recycle plastic. They just told right. people. Until, I mean, they still tell us that they could recycle plastic, but really they don't know yeah. how to. In 1991, apparently during the Gulf War, every Canadian soldier was given a girl guide, a box of Girl Guide cookies when they arrived in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> it's like, thanks, I didn't want this. I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'll like, take these cookies. I, can I eat it at home? Yeah, it's like, I needed some bullets. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a peace offering. You could give it to your a- enemy combatants or whatever. You know, Be in friends. 1992, Canadian astronaut and former Girl Guide Roberta Bondar juggled good Girl Guide cookies in space. That was pretty fun. <laughs> That's cool. That's, what I was like. <laughs> That's the best fact. Yeah. I wonder how many she has. I mean, I guess it's pretty easy to juggle. Listen, if you're in cookies. space, you can juggle like 20 things. Though they will f- fly away <laughs> if you toss it too hard. It'll how just do you like... spin that? What makes it go back down? It doesn't. That's so the problem. Do, how do you juggle it then? Then you have to like kind of guide them. Oh. So yeah. Like, a, like when like you're a... throwing, you kind of have to like throw it at an arc. So it's a woman guided juggle. Yes. <laughs> She's very talented. In 2009, they apparently launched what is known as Cookie All Stars, which is their cookie selling rewards initiative. Oh my god, this sounds like a. It's starting to sound like an MLM. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> All I could think about is hey, Girl Guides, where's our rewards for what we bought? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so who mm-hmm. gets. Yeah. Who gets the prize for us? I think us it's supposed buying... to be us. Or maybe the, you, I can't be a Girl Guide. You could. The. Okay. Prize should be more cookies. <laughs> <laughs> well, the prizes go as follows: um, if, if you sell fifteen to twenty nine cases, you get a twenty five dollar movie voucher and a crest. Mm. I think you get a crest for any any time you actually hit any of these. It's just probably a different crest. Uh, thirty to thirty nine cases, which is an odd number. Anyway, you get a seventy five dollar gift card to Indigo. Mm. For forty to seventy nine cases. You get a $125 Amazon gift card, which, hold on, let me do the math of this. 70 to 79 cases. And there's like a dozen in each case. Yeah. Oh, cases, I guess not boxes. Yeah, not boxes, Damn. but cases. I th- yeah, I think they're cases of 12. Yeah, that's a lot of boxes. Yeah. You gotta be a super seller. Yeah. If you get... 80 plus cases you get a camping kit which is a backpack sleeping bag mess kit flashlight and a canteen or this one you get to choose a 250 dollars amazon gift card oh, gift card please <laughs> yeah 100 percent. i don't think anyone would pick the camping bag you could probably Madness. get the camping kit and still have 100 bucks left over yeah from amazon <laughs> cool cool in 2010 they created a hundredth anniversary box oh i don't remember seeing these yeah, neither did I. And this one's super random, but um, Ia brought it up. Troop Beverly Hills was a movie in 1989 that starred Shelley Long. I remember this. It was this like posh Beverly Hills lady who was then asked to lead a local troop of Girl Scouts. It's, Not Girl I, Guys, Girl Scouts, yeah. Yeah. And they were tasked to sell a thousand box of cookies. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, I think I watched that when I was a kid, but I don't remember much about it. It looked very 1989 for a movie. <laughs> I was watching the trailer the other day. I'm like, oh well, my Shelley, god. Shelley Long is a very 1980s lady yeah, of the time. True. The only other thing I had about Girl Guides is I found some controversy about Girl Guides. Ooh. And this, I'm just going to read this blog post that this one Girl Guide wrote about. Wheel, wheel. Drama. Reason, yeah, it was, well, this is full on drama. It starts like this. The reason we didn't want Avery to join Sparks back in kindergarten or <laughs> the brownies in grade two came down to cookies. Essentially, oh, wow. we didn't want to spend Saturdays sitting outside of Walmart trying to sell chocolate mint cookies or the lesser chocolate vanilla sandwich cookies that to nobody wanted. Who probably <laughs> just bought a lunch, a bunch of junk food in the store. Man, they really like just tearing down. Then you down need this. to camp yourself out at the entrance, man. Yeah. You got to hit them before they go in. Yeah. This this blogger is like full on just hate 
shitting on on girl your scut cookies okay because then I she like adds the a vitriol. note i like she, the vitriol she adds a note after america has way better girl, girl scout cookies than canada i craved samosas and trefoils as a child <laughs> but we finally caved and we let her join up as a brownie last year she graduated to girl guide at the start of grade four i still call it brownies though i just can't get my head around girl guides quote unquote who is she guiding exactly uh, arbitrary attack right there this okay keep going very smart young girl <laughs> instead of hawking five dollar boxes of cookies at the mall she sells them door to door and i and by she i mean we i hold the case of cookies and she negotiates the transaction we get that every third house everyone's like the everyone likes the mint ones i have yet to meet anyone who would rather get the sandwich kind <laughs> it's true dear girl guides is it time to retire the sandwich cookies why not just sell the mint cookies all, all year? the time yeah or better exactly. yet, imagine how well those girl scout shortbread trefoils and caramel chocolate coconut samosas would sell here it's criminal we don't have more options <laughs> truly <laughs> truly because spring is the season for sandwich cookies and because I'd already seen Facebook posts from parents of cookie selling competitors trying to unload their boxes to other parents at school pickups. I knew Avery and I needed a strategy to get rid of our case. And then she goes on how they go about doing it door to door. <laughs> they had a really cool idea. It was their idea was to go door to door during the um, playoff season of the Calgary Flames. I, mean, I think these folks are from Cal Alberta. Oh, okay, yeah. So they're just at home wanting, watching the games. Yeah, they were like, if we can't get snacks. the people watching in the bar, we'll get the people who are watching at home, which is genius. Ah, uh, yes, because you can't go inside a bar <laughs> if yeah. you're a child. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, we're already breaking the labor laws. We can't break the bar laws as well. Yeah, so that, that blog post, so, yeah, very, very opinionated. Yeah, strong, strong opinion. Stay strong. She's, she's right strong. though. Like, she's right. She's, <laughs> she's she's right. Like nobody wants. If you had a choice between the sandwich cookies and the thin mints, you're gonna go for the thin mints. Yeah, it's not even a question. Unless you're a sociopath. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I also tried to find some other girl guides from around the world. I only I didn't really find a lot who do girl guide cookies as well. Um, the girl guides of Singapore would do it, but they sell theirs in little metal tins. Oh, Which that's really cute. cute. Yeah, and they change it every year. So they like announce oh, so the design like a, every year. It's a collectible at this point then. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> and they look really cute. Um, they've been doing it since 1994. Um, and it seems to still be happening. They have three flavors. They even have more flavors in Canada. They have the chocolate mint, chocolate mm. cream, and chocolate malt. So it's like three flavors with three different variants. <laughs> Chocolate nice mint. Chocolate. chocolate with mint chocolate with cream and chocolate with malt <laughs> i love malt so i would love to get my hands on yeah, a box of that it's yeah. very far <laughs> it's very far it's fine but yeah google the mint the tins are really cute nice <laughs> uh there's also new zealand does it the girl guides of new zealand they allow for online ordering but um they also call it biscuits instead of cookies and they only have one flavor, which is chocolate. Lame. <laughs> Pass. Um, the only other one I found was Australia. But as of last year, they have discontinued the program there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, doubt hawking things door to door is very COVID friendly. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it lasted about 60 years. The apparently have been experiencing a lot of drop in sales and interest for girl guide cookies and then covid hit so they're like yeah <laughs> we're just gonna bye they call it biscuits as well there but they also had a few flavors there they had mint chocolate chip shortbread and the traditional sandwich one if they probably just stuck to the chocolate chip maybe they'd still be alive i don't know yeah and then as we do with every episode we ask is it healthy or is it good um so they don't have peanuts or peanut butters in girl guides but i did find this one disclaimer about healthy what it, about how healthy the girl guide cookies are according to girl guides of canada themselves and they say the girl guides of canada 
are aware of the health issues surrounding particular processed foods, including cookies, and is committed to maintaining the quality of Girl Guide cookies while keeping these concerns in mind. The Girl Guides of Canada is proud to state that our classic chocolate vanilla Girl Guide cookies have zero trans fat per serving, while our chocolate mint have 90% less trans fat per serving than before. There is only now there is now only 0.1 gram of trans fat per serving, which is two cookies. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll live. <laughs> I'm gonna... Two cookies is a serving? My goodness. Oof. Two cookies a serving. It's like 300 calories per yeah. serving. <laughs> our ability to completely remove the trans fat is limited by our desire to maintain the same quality, taste, and texture of our chocolatey mint cookies. We have worked closely with our baker... Oh, there it is. Their Foods Limited to reduce the trans fast content in our cookies while maintaining the same great taste that Canadians love. And this is my favorite part. As always, it is important to remember that cookies are a treat. <laughs> Just so, in case you didn't know. Oh, I've been doing yeah. it wrong because I've been eating it as meals. I've Yikes. been eating it as me, me, the meal after the meal. Mm, that's called dessert. <laughs> yeah, but when it's like a, a meal size it's, Oh, amount, when it's like a whole, okay. Yeah, that's more than dessert. <laughs> you start getting a box and a half and you're like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so to answer the is it healthy question, I, mm -hmm. I think it's safe to say definitely no. No. If, well, in moderation, not even in moderation, I don't think, because it's all sugar and like... Yeah, but how can you even do two cookies? That's in moderation is like you'll eat two cookies a day. Yo, that's not going to happen. That's not possible. 20 or bust. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And by minute, 20, minute I mean 20, 20 boxes. I don't mean 20 <laughs> cookies. <laughs> yeah. It is like they do used to do a lot of door to door stuff. Uh, apparently in Canada, they did, or sorry, not apparently. In Canada, they did try to sell it online, as we all know. But apparently, that was just a COVID thing. So. Oh, they're going to stop doing that now? I don't think. I don't know if they will stop. I actually forgot to check this. Because I, I just assumed they stopped, but I realized they only sell it seasonally. So they might right. have just not sold it because they just weren't in season. Because we're not in season, right. Um, okay. It seems like you could buy it online, but you need a Girl Scout reference number or Girl Guide reference number. Because huh. during the pandemic, when we were able to buy it ourselves, they got rid of that. But it seems that they're coming back. Oh, we should have ordered more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should have just gone ham. We missed out, man. Yeah. Well, now we're going to have to import these foreign Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, because we have to wait, what? Oh, Jesus. Like seven months until Thin Mints? Thin Mints? Back? Yeah, no. No, we're yeah. going for the S'morios or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So to answer, is it good... Thin mints, yes. The regular oh, they're regular so girl cookies. Like, just get Oreos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. Just get Oreos. It's cheaper. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So what do we want to do next episode? Do we want to do... um, What was it? I think we should go to back to, like, really weird ones. Yes, we should. Okay. Let's do Shirako. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it sounds exciting. We talked about it. I think the other uh, have day. we? Yeah. Was I drunk? No. I'm not gonna... <laughs> no. <laughs> but I don't want to remind you so that in case you... I'll be surprised. Does... Yeah, it will keep it a surprise. Cause... Yeah, she rock goes up. This will be fun. Amazing. Cool. Well, that's our episode. I am baffled at my memory right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's short, shorter Wait. than usual. Yeah, it's it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter. I need my I need my Adderall. <laughs> okay. I remember to do my taxes though. So yay! Oh, there you go. You don't need it. You're fine. Yeah, I'm good. Well, oh, on that note, that's peace out. See you. This is Bye. Morgan's Morgan's This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Edited by Mick Narciso and Bianca Goico. Logo and graphics by Angel Lynn. Music by Mick Narciso. And videography by Bianca Goico. This show was produced by Geek Happy Network. Constantly curious about the things we love. 
If you enjoyed listening to Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify, YouTube, or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We would love to hear your thoughts. Hi there, my name is Kanyeki Kamawe and I'm the host of the Represented Podcast. No matter who you are and no matter where you come from, we each have a story to tell. The Represented Podcast explores individuals' life stories with the hope that we can identify with or learn from them. Subscribe and listen to the show on YouTube, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts or even Spotify. You can also check us out on the Geek Happy Network website. That's geekhappynetwork.com. Finally, Follow the show on Instagram at Represented Podcast to keep up with the fun stuff. Love to see you there. Peace.